Malazan, Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson is probably the series for the channel I have spent the most time reading in actual like days it's taken me to actually finish the series, though I'm not quite there yet. This video should just be considered a review of books seven and eight, though it's more or less generally a rant about the current state of Malazan, because I've been extremely generous with my praise for this series so far, and I stand by nearly every positive thing I have said. But upon finishing these two entries and really enjoying them and thinking they're two very solid Malazan books, there are also larger flaws to Erickson's writing that are becoming more and more apparent to me. Malazan, as everyone who's heard of this series is aware, asked the question, what would happen if an author tried to really write a story that encompasses a full world? Not just a continent, not a country, a world. And it's why we restart with Malazan several times. And before I've been very forgiving about some of the flaws that come along with this, but it's starting to wear down on me. Don't get me wrong, I still very much so enjoy Malazan. I think there are spectacular events in this book, notice the phrasing, and there is many more admirable qualities to how well Erickson is achieving what he set out to do. But let's get into these bigger flaws that I think are coming closer and closer to the surface and my predictions for the end of the series as well. Reaper's Veil picks up after one of the most epic sieges I've ever read in fantasy. And I was really excited to see where uh, the thrust of this narrative was going to head. But then we had another issue that plagues Malazan, where every time there's some thrust forward, Erickson immediately loses it. There is so little plot that actually is cohesive and continual here that I never find myself picking up these books for the plot because Erickson's not writing it for that. He's writing it for his world building. He's writing it for his characters. And even his characters seem somehow disjointed from these plots at point. So instead of having these grand overarching narratives, which most fantasy series rely on for enticing their readers, and they do exist here, but it's not where the dependence of Malazan is going to come for enjoyment. So those kind of just sit in the background for Erickson to then indulge himself as a writer to continue fleshing out this world and these characters to the best of his ability. And that's fine. I'm actually okay with that, though I do struggle with it. I'm not trying to say that means Malazan is a bad series, but it's certainly something that can bug certain readers like myself. Now notice I said characters, and if you paid attention to previous reviews of Malazan of mine, you know that some of these characters I don't find to be up to par with the current state of fantasy. And that He's getting better. Erickson gets better at realizing characters as the series progresses, but there's a combination of too little too late and him writing himself into a corner to an extent that still affects negatively the overall enjoyment of these characters. They aren't human in a way. Erickson is still disjointed from his characters largely, where you'll have moments where he starts to really realize their humanization. He really starts to uh, make them feel connectable within the narrative, but those are like oases in a desert. Largely, there is a disconnect, especially with his uber-powerful characters. And so you can kind of encapsulate this criticism I have here with Erickson is not about plot. He's about events. And these events are pulled off so well. Like, holy smokes. Malazan has some of the most jaw-dropping moments I've ever read in fantasy. And if you're the kind of reader who can just enjoy how well and executed a moment is in a story, you'll, you'll be fine with it. But I need a full justification and satisfying conclusion to plot lines for me to really care that much about what's going on. And Erickson seems unable to span those series wide. And instead what you get is these chopped up books that he tries to then puzzle back together and once you've had two books in another direction, going back to this original one, there's already that just literal time disconnect, but then even the connection he writes in themselves, it seems staggered and strange. It's like he's evolving as an author, so he's struggling to go back to what he wrote before and continue it from there. Although I've heard mixed things and conflicting things about how he wrote these books in which order, so I don't even know what's happening there. Maybe it's me projecting as a reader, but I'm certainly noticing something is wrong. All of this adds up to me as the reader not being compelled through the overall story. I find myself reading Malazan 
purely for these moments. And that's cancerous, man. For me to love a fantasy story personally, I need to care about the entire buildup and everything happening within the larger plot. I'm very much so that kind of reader if you're not wonderful, but I just am not invested in the A, B, C, D, E story. And instead I just kind of find myself going, B was cool. Okay, J's all right. Q's pretty dope. I'm curious about Z. And that's another point. I have no idea where Erickson is taking this overall story. And Toll, Toll the Hounds definitely has a bit of a convergence going on where all of a sudden, okay, Erickson's bringing it together. He's finally taking all these different storylines and trying to merge them. But I have a sneaking suspicion, especially because I've seen some diehard Malazan fans saying that they weren't satisfied with the ending of this series, that Erickson, instead of actually justifying all of these plot lines he's begun, he's going to loosely wrap up a few, not give all of them the attention they deserve, and then select a couple that he's definitely picked out to be favorites and give them satisfying results in book 10, uh, especially around the crippled God, because you know, that's the title of the book. But I can't imagine in these last two books, he's actually going to be able to wrap up everything he's built so far. He's done an okay job of wrapping some things up as he's gone along, but I still have so many questions and so much is unanswered that I'm just, I'm, I'm skeptical. So if you have a narrative that you're kind of meh compelled through, and I've mentioned several times in reviews before that Erickson refuses to guide the reader in any kind of like uh, explanatory way through what he's establishing. It's very much so a just toss it in, figure it out, stupid mentality. Why am I coming back? Why am I still saying I like Malazan? Well, it's because Erickson is extraordinary at where he shines. This is a world that even though you're constantly gonna hear fans say like, oh, it's the greatest thing ever, it's still not that overhyped. Malazan earns the reputation it has. You can think of few other fantasy worlds that can even be in a conversation with it in terms of world building. And I do enjoy me some world building that brings me back in. And I do like some of the characters enough uh, to be returning for them as well. Especially Whiskey Jack, I love that man so, so much. So much of this, so much of it, could be resolved if Erickson simply improved how he delivers information to the reader. But he isn't improving on that. There's a reason that I have to have so many notes when I read Malazan. Yes, I am reading them like a month apart a lot of the time, so there's needed a bit of a refresh there, or at least several weeks, and I'm reading many fantasy books in between. It's just part of my job, I have to do that. I, you might enjoy this series quite a bit more if you're willing to just sit down and binge, and I mean binge Malazan so all of it stays fresh in your mind. But even admitting all those things, I still maintain Erickson is one of the weakest epic fantasy authors I've read in terms of conveying information clearly and concisely to his audience. You're constantly having to like triple think about what's being said and happening just to then connect it to the other things that this affects that haven't been mentioned in a hundred pages. It's a real art form as an author to subtly remind and coerce a reader's uh, thoughts into the right lines of connection to completely uh, mix together and understand your grander narrative. A lot of authors aren't great at that. Erickson barely attempts it. He definitely, again, as we've said, has this mentality of just like push you over the edge and wherever it goes, it goes. I'm not gonna do the effort to try and keep you in the right mindset or maintain it. Good luck. So instead of planting seeds and having this growing story among the reader's head, uh, the experience of reading Malazan to me is more like throwing mud on a glass surface and you just have to throw all the mud you can as quickly as possible to hope it all sticks before you're done with the series. And unfortunately, because of my job, I, I haven't been able to maintain the correct amount of momentum. I just overall am struggling more than ever with Malazan, despite the fact, I just said all these negative things, Reaper's Gale and Toll the Hound are two of the best Malazan books I've read. It's just that I'm becoming more experienced with Erickson, and so of course, his flaws are becoming more apparent. I want him to stop having these 100 to 200 page slogs within his books. It's not every Malazan book, but it's a lot of them. I want him to work on how he conveys information, and I would really appreciate if the guy actually focused on developing his plot's thrust 
and the reader's investment in it. And once he hyper focuses like this, uh, you can just really enjoy what's going on. I feel like every reader would have a much greater appreciation for this overall story. Like, you know how uh, people look at like the prequels for Star Wars and there's like these fan re-edits where it's one solid movie and it's like a way better viewing experience because they cut out a lot of the confusing crap. For a different reason, I feel like this needs to be done for Malazan. People need to go through and cut out a lot that just doesn't need to be there. And then you could suddenly have this very streamlined, just as interesting, intricate, fantasy world that will grab the reader but instead we're left with Erickson's indulgence and if you like his indulgence I can absolutely see and respect why Malazan could be your favorite fantasy series ever I'm just more plot focused than he is so let's get into actual specifics uh, about these books yes things feel like they're coming together uh, the character work being done is better than ever before. It's still not near the closest of like greatest fantasy character work I've seen, uh, but Erickson does seem to be conscious of this flaw and with every book, even Bush Between Reaper's Gate and Toll the Hounds uh, improving, so that's wonderful. The events that he's working towards in these ones also pay off very well. I just wish, again, it felt actually more like a complete connection to the overall plot of the story rather than just the almost formula of Malazan books where it's just this uh, da, 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 da. Um, but I don't know I'm I'm struggling I'm more tired after each Malazan book than I think I've been for a fantasy book in a long time but I am also still despite everything I just said a Malazan fan I just want you to respect the fact that as a critic I'm being very conscious of its flaws. And part of the reason I'm putting this out there is I get a lot of comments from people, and I mean a lot, who are saying I picked up Gardens of the Moon because you like Malazan and I hated it. And I'm like, hey, pay attention to my Malazan reviews where I say this is like the least recommendable fantasy story ever. There is an interesting narrative decision in Toll the Hounds that baffles me a bit on its introduction to this point in the series. We're late in the game here and Erickson has done something fairly drastic. Definitely hit me out of left field. I still find Erickson's prose and characters to both be admirable and highly criticized at the same time. And I think that's the most apparent you could possibly see it within uh, Toll the Hounds. I did like Reaper's Gate more than Toll the Hounds just because Reaper's Gate especially uh, had probably Erickson's strongest work with character I've read in a minute. And on top of that, it just was a bit tighter narratively, though there was a lot going on. I just felt myself slightly more motivated through those pages. Uh, but I do want to praise both of these books for having maybe Erickson's best use to date with uh, symbolism and themes, grander metaphors. His, his meta, his meta writing is very underrated. You're constantly seeing Erickson fans hype up his world. And what I would like to do is take a moment to hit on these kind of subtextual elements that Erickson actually shines in, I would say as brightly as his overall world building. And that becomes very apparent in the book I actually liked less, but still a solid Malazan book, Toll the Hounds, where he is having clear underlying subtle yet clearly delivered, never heavy handed uh, themes, allegories uh, delivered to his reader. And Erickson deserves all kinds of praise there. He is so interesting as an author because I wouldn't even say the criticisms I have for him are things he would take as criticism. I'm pretty sure he's hyper aware of how he writes because he does it so boldly and distinctly. I think he just doesn't give a about what people expect from his writing, and so he's just gonna deliver what he wants to deliver. I then have to interpret that as a critic and say how it affects me, so I respect how he writes. I really do. I just don't enjoy it all that much. Overall, concluding thoughts, uh, I'm going to give Reaper's Gate a solid 7.5 out of 10. Uh, not the best Malazan book I've read, but a really good Malazan book and one I enjoyed. And I'll probably give Toll the Hounds just because I wasn't as motivated through that narrative, I wasn't as invested, and I found a, a couple more sloppier elements here and there. Uh, 6.5 out of 10. Uh, and Malazan as a whole right now, I'm feeling a solid 7.5 total overall. It's just, man, I don't recommend this to 
Hardly anybody. <laughs> I want to do like one of those extreme bets with one of my friends where you do something small, but the ramifications of losing the bet are something like huge. And if they're ever like, okay, what do I have to do if I lose? My assignment will be read Malazan Book of the Fallen because I know it will take them nine months and it will be like a abusive process for them because I'm a mega fantasy fan and it's draining for me. Anyway, this is still good. I still like it overall. Thank you for letting me vent though. It's very cathartic for me to be able to just vomit out all this built up criticism I did have as well in a healthy way. Anyway guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one y'all. Peace. Oh, and I will be doing spoilery uh, Malazan type videos once I finish the whole series. People have been asking for those, but I don't do those for series unless I'm caught up to their publication or I finish them and they're done. So wait for that, but they will be coming. All right, peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, super mega high tier, Josh Campbell and William Alexander. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, and Mary. Mary, you upped your pledge, and I appreciate that immensely. Hope you guys are having a wonderful one. Peace.